ओके आई थिंक आई कैन स्टार्ट नाउ Okay, so today we are going to give you lecture four, and I am going to talk about multiplication. So some of these things you might know, but actually these are important for us to use in the later applications. So we know that uh, given two numbers. a and b and uh, in some base suppose the base is r you know sometime you, how do we find a cross b so we know that uh, we can write down suppose we uh, use divide and conquer and reduce a write it down a as And by two plus a l, and we can write b as b h r is to power n by two plus b l. In that case, I can compute product a b as a h r is to power n by two plus a l into B H R is to power n by two plus B L. Okay, and uh, this can be simplified. So this will be A H B H R is to power n plus A H B L plus A L B H. R is power n by two plus a l b l. So now we can see that if we want to compute this product, uh, we can we need to compute one of this product, this product, this product, this product. There are four sub problems actually, right? So what is the complexity? Uh, because we can do this recursively. So if whenever we want to compute the product a and b, okay, of say length n. So then we need to compute these sub problems, you know, sub products, and four of them. So uh, run time will be uh, t of n, the complexity will be because there are four sub problems of size n by two. So this is four times t of n by two plus some bookkeeping and everything will require order of n. Okay, complexity. Now you know you know that using master's theorem, uh, we can solve this, and we say that t of n from here is order of n square. Okay, so this is the you know normal complexity for multiplying two numbers. So the question is, can we do better? Can we do better? And of course, as you know, that answer is yes. So, rather than putting it into four sub problems, you know, here there are there are four sub problems. You know, we have used. We can divide uh, this into three sub problems. So, let me.
okay so if i write down x is equal to ah bh okay y is equal to al bl and z is equal to ah plus al into bh plus bl minus x minus y okay so if we have this thing in mind so then the product ab can be written as x times r is rn base r plus z times r is for n by 2 minus y so now actually you can see that one product is this another product is this and third product is this you know so actually there are three sub problems now right so our t of n will be three sub problems of size n by 2 so this is 3 of n by 2 plus order of n and we know that when we solve it it turns out that t of n is big o of n list for log 3 which is nothing but order big O of n is for 1.584. So this algorithm is faster. This is known as algo. This algorithm was actually discovered by uh, uh, actually when he was only 23 year old and uh, when Coloma Grove actually gave a lecture and within a week he produced this algorithm for doing a faster multiplication so <clears throat> this idea of uh, basically decomposing a number into two halves uh, can be generalized further and it was done by in 1961 actually and later on uh, Stephen Cook in his PhD thesis in 1966 gave a systematic method for doing this and so now this is known as Toome-Cook algorithm Toome-Cook multiplication algo what you do here is split each input into k parts so actually we call it as a kb algorithm you know k parts so what is k? k is a positive integer greater than or equal to 2. It's an arbitrary fixed constant. Okay. So m is our n by k. If we put this m is n by k, then we can write integer a as a0 plus a1 b raised for m b is a base plus dot 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 a k minus 1 b k minus 1 times m and we can write down similarly b is equal to b0 plus b1 base m plus b k minus 1 b is for k minus 1 m 
So each integers AI in BI here has length at most M. Okay. Now I think uh, one minute. One thing that uh, I would like to mention here, uh, how do we write these numbers in, you know, so normally in base B, a number can be written as, this is just for a side note here, something like summation, I is equal to 0 to M N minus 1 AI BI in the base B. So S is an entry in 0 and 1. AIs are something like, you know, 0 to B minus 1 for every I equal to 0 to N minus 1. This is just a side note here. Okay, so if B is fixed, we can also write it down. A is equal to minus 1 raised to power S. A n minus 1, A n minus 2, A 0. The base is B. Okay, so this is a general notation, you know. So basically, any number, and just like that uh, decimal number, you know, we know. You can write a decimal expansion. Similarly, we can write for any number in general, you know, in base B. Anyway, so we come back to our problem. A is uh, written like this. B is written like this, right? So from this, actually, uh, from these two, A and B, we can write down polynomials f of x as summation i is equal to 0 to k minus 1 ai x raised for i and gx is the polynomial summation i is equal to 0 to k minus 1 bi x raised for i both both are polynomials of degree k minus 1 right So in now our product, so what we have done actually uh, from these representations, I am just replacing base B, uh, you know, with that intermediate X, you know, and saying that we can make a polynomial kind of thing here. So I have written a polynomial, fx and gx. <coughs> so a dot b will be what? f of b raised to power m times g of b raised for m suppose uh, this product is something like h of b raised for m where hx is a polynomial you know which is a product of these two so i is equal to 0 to 2k minus 2 ci x raised for i define it as product of fx and gx, you know, the product polynomial. So basically, uh, the product of two numbers a and b is nothing but h of b raised for m, you know. Here, ci's, the constant ci's are integers of length at most m okay so if we know ci if you know ci then we can compute the product because you know if you know these ci's then i know this value and that means i can compute this product so i can compute uh, the product a by you know by shifting each so 
if we know ci then we can compute product ab by shifting each coefficient by im digits and ending up the resulting integers right and so this cost is order of n Okay, so one minute, we need to create more space. Okay, so this cost is, so this point, this means, you know, computing the product A dot B, means computing the product a dot b reduces to computing product of gx and hx okay of polynomials of length n okay so uh, sorry the polynomials of degree less than k yeah with coefficients of length at most n by k okay so our approach what is our approach evaluate f and g at 2k minus 1 points say x naught, x1, x 2k minus 2 of constant length so typically we take we take x j is equal to j so j lies between 0 and 2k minus 2 okay other choices are possible for xj but uh, typically we take xj is equal to j in that case we have f of sorry f of j is equal to f of xj and g of j is equal to g of x j of length order of m so to compute the product oh, excuse me sir yes Sir, how we are choosing these points x0, x1, and then so on, x2k minus 2 points? Uh, some 2k minus 1 points, you know, that's all. So we can take anything. So actually, any choice will work. Uh, and right now, we are choosing this xj is equal to uh, j. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, what we are doing, uh, the degree is here 2k minus 2 for these polynomials, the product ones, right? So we are just evaluating at some of these 2k minus 2 points. 
right? Some points x naught, x one, f two, x two k minus two points. So in fact, uh, uh, later on you will see that uh, in the later algorithm it has been modified. By the way, I just want to ask you questions. Have you seen this stuff uh, before or not? Oh, sir, in the fast Fourier uh, multiplication by fast Fourier transform, there are also uh, we are choosing such points. Yeah, correct. So basically, there we are choosing uh, you know complex roots of unity or something like that, right? Oh yes, yes, sir. Yeah. So so idea is started from here only. <clears throat> in this method, they tried these kind of points, and later on, people observed that in fact any choice will work now. Like you know. And, uh, and up till the latest uh, order of n log n algorithm, uh, you know, uh, there also, you know, uh, uh, same idea is carrying, people are generalizing the ideas, you know. So this is something, so, you know, I'm not sure because you said uh, that you know this stuff earlier, right? I mean, have you seen this before, this one, this uh, algorithm? No. Okay, because you were telling me that uh, you have seen this Tim uh, Cook algorithm, you know, the order. But the proof is yes, uh, yes. We are not uh, familiar with the uh, how the working of this algorithm. Okay, okay, okay. So that's fine. So I thought probably you know this also, you know. So that's why. So now you can see the proof actually. Okay. So how we are computing? So basically, we are just taking uh, the two numbers a and b. Part, okay, we're splitting into k parts, right? Like a zero, a one, a k minus one, like yes. this forming the corresponding polynomials, writing uh, yes, the product sir. as a product polynomial, right? And choosing yes. these points, that's the thing, right? Okay, so I think we can quickly look at it. It's not very difficult, uh, so that's why, uh, you know, we can look at it. So, and so have you seen for the uh, that uh, fast Fourier transform entire proof, you know, how it works? Oh, yes, sir. We have studied that algorithm, sir. My my basic question is how we are choosing this point. These points are some means uh, some random points or uh, it's yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a random points. Yeah, so huh? you can okay. that's why because you can any any choice of points will work because the algorithm you know ultimately uh, there are certain points are there. We are evaluating the function and then we are interpolating right to actually get the value. Okay, so that is a key point. Yes, Okay, so now to compute the product uh, HJ, HJ is basically uh, your FJ dot GJ, okay, which is F of XJ, G of XJ is equal to H of XJ, you know. So we call product algorithm regressively. Uh, and uh, we interpolate hx from its values uh, hj at point xj. So we interpolate hx from its value hj at point xj. So note that actually there is a nice observation here. We have this matrix one x naught x naught raised to the power two k minus two one x one x one raised to the power two k minus two one x two k minus two and we have x two k minus two power 2k minus 2 times c0 c1 c2k minus 2 is equal to h of x0 we are evaluating this uh, polynomial h at these points 2k minus 2 and this is nothing but h0 h1 h2k minus 2 so now note that uh, so 
this matrix is a very special matrix. Do you know what is the name of this matrix? Any idea? Yes, Praveen, Komal, anyone, Ashish. What is the name of this matrix? Have you seen this kind of matrix? So one row or column is all one. Then all these values x0, x1, x2, k minus 2, then square, then cube, and then up to 2k minus 2 powers. Yes, sir, I have seen this matrix, but I don't remember what was this name. Okay, so its name is Vandermond matrix, a very famous matrix actually. And we can compute the determinant, you know, easily. Uh, Vandermond. Vandermond matrix, you know, it's a very important matrix. Uh, as long as xi's are distinct, uh, this matrix is invertible, you know. So you can actually find the determinant, you know. So we call this matrix capital V. So now here, uh, these points are known to us, right? These values are known to you. These values are known to you. These things are unknown, right? CIs. CIs are the product, you know. So what we can do, we can actually compute C0, C1, C2K minus 2 as V inverse. As long as Xi's are distinct, the matrix is invertible. So we can compute the V inverse, right? H0, H1, H2K minus 2. Okay. So here is this. Now, K is constant, right? K is constant here, we know that. And each entry of V, V is of constant size. I'm just computing the computation, uh, you know, computational complexity. And only constant number of, you know, constant number of operations needed, primitive operations needed to compute V inverse. So actually, computing V inverse, this I think I leave it to verify, actually computing V inverse and vector H0 H0, H1, H2K minus 2 transpose actually, you know. This needs order of n operations. Uh, as each HJ has length order of n. Each HJ has length order of n. So finally, we are computing C, which is product a dot B as the sum of of 2k minus 1 integers cj bj you know sorry cj bj I think I have written here, yeah, CI. It's not power, but actually, you know, it's just, uh, it's not power, but it's, you know, just sub superscript. From J is equal to 0 to 2K minus 2. And this is also of order, order of N, okay. So essentially, computation time, uh, Time of Tom Cook Elgo. We can write down the recursive equation T of n is less than or equal to 2k minus 1 times T of n by k plus order of n. All other things are consumed in order of n. 
now again using master serum right p of n from here is big o of n raised to power log of 2k minus 1 divided by log of k so this is the complexity which is obviously better than uh, the previous algorithm right and uh, in fact since since limit of log of 2k minus 1 divided by log of k as k tends to infinity is 1 we conclude that for any epsilon positive there exists an algorithm you know with t of n as big o of n is power 1 plus epsilon okay so this is the uh, algorithm faster than the previous algorithm where we de did the division you know from the kasruba algorithm where we de did the division of into uh, two equal parts right sorry where they were, we were able to convert into three sub problems and here we are able to convert it into uh, K sub problems, you know. So basically, uh, we have divided into sorry, 2k minus 1, 2k minus 1, you know. So we divide the integer into k parts, and the total number of sub problems are 2k minus 1, right? So this is how we arrive at this result. Now, I think I would like to give you a next algorithm a brief idea before we proceed into the you know, the key idea. So next algorithm which is of multiplication is by two german mathematicians okay and i think this algorithm is widely used uh, in computer science uh, for many calculations this is a widely used algorithm you know uh, so So what we do, we split A and B, the two integers into N blocks AI and BI. That is, we write a is equal to a0 plus a1 times b base b plus a n minus 1 times b raised to power n minus 1. And we write down b is equal to b0 plus b1 b plus b raised to power n minus 1 times b raised to power n minus 1. So where AI and BI are 0 to B minus 1, you know, because base is B. Now the difference between Tumko algorithm, you remember there we split A and B into constant number of K blocks of size N by K. So technique is almost similar. So I'm going to I need some more space here. Okay, so technique is very exactly similar. Uh, what we do here now, we form the polynomials f of x, a0 plus a1x plus a n minus 1x raised for n minus 1 and gx is equal to b0 plus b1x 
plus b n minus 1 x raised to power n minus 1 okay so there are two polynomials of degree n minus 1 now what to do we to reduce uh, you know just like that uh, competition you know in the tom uh, tom cook method uh, so we you know reduces the uh, product into the computation of the you know uh, this uh, product polynomial right and then we evaluated uh, the product polynomial h at at, x, at certain points right so here actually we are going to do this at base p actually so our h is summation i is equal to 0 to 2n minus 2 so remember there it was 2k minus 2 ci x is for i this is defined as the product of two polynomials f and g and we evaluate h at x equal to b the base b so now actually uh, just like in the previous case but we evaluate f and g at two end points there it was 2k minus two points x naught x1 x 2n minus 1 okay and we compute the product f of xi times g of xi is equal to h of xi okay so now the crucial point is the special choice of x size this is something important so instead of considering <coughs> arbitrary distinct values for the points xi we now choose xi to be omega raised to power i for i is equal to 0 2n minus 1 where omega is a omega is a complex cube root of unity so is a primitive 2nth root of unity so you can take omega is equal to e raised to power pi i by n you know By the way, uh, uh, you know, do you know what is the meaning of primitive root? Any idea? Are you aware of, uh, you know, this uh, idea of uh, how to construct finite field? No, so okay, so that portion is missing, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that case, actually, what we can do, okay, uh, so basically, you know what happens. Uh, an uh, element in a field is said to be primitive if its order is, uh, you know, uh, the whole. So, for example, if you look at a field with four number of elements, so you delete zero and, uh, you know, so you get a field with three number of elements and that forms multiplicative group. So, if order of uh, uh, every element in the, if not every, I mean, there are elements which are having order uh one less 
So if the whole uh, order is 4 and if it is 3, then we call that element as a primitive element. Okay. So okay. So so essentially, if field is a field, if there is a field with q number of elements, okay. Uh, so an element alpha from the field is said to be primitive if order of alpha is q minus one. So okay. Order. What do you mean by order? Means we keep on raising it to the power, the smallest power for which uh, the element uh, value will give you one. So alpha raised to power m is 1. So m is the order. Okay. The smallest positive integer m. Anyway, so I think uh, so there are different ways we can do this now. So actually now you, you see the difference between this algorithm and the previous algorithm. Now here we are looking at these points xi as uh, uh, you know complex cube root of unity. So let me i think uh, before going into the deeper into this algorithm uh, let me give you a more simpler version you know maybe you know that will be and and maybe an example uh, that should help you in understanding this okay before going into deeper one so let me show you By the way, I should mention that uh, this algorithm has complexity order of n log n log of log n. Okay. So this these uh, choice of points uh, is is very very important, you know. So so essentially, what we are doing, uh, we are we are going to do. Uh, we look at the numbers we want to multiply, write down in base B, right? I mean, in the in the form of polynomials that I have shown to you. And then you actually uh, take the discrete Fourier transform. So by the way, what is the order of discrete Fourier transform? Are you aware? What is the order of discrete Fourier transform? How much uh, uh, complexity of discrete Fourier transform, TFT? Any idea? Discrete Fourier transform ki complexity kitni hoti hai? Hmm? So, uh, are you uh, you know are you aware of how to compute this complexity? Master's theorem, which I have used, do you know about Master's theorem? Yes, sir. Okay. So discrete Fourier transform ki complexity kitni hoti? Do you have any idea? Uh, order of n square. Correct. Order of n square. Very good. And uh, fast Fourier transform ki uh, complexity kitni hoti hai? Order of n, I think. Order of n log n, right? Yes, sir. Haan, n log n. Oh, n log n hoti hai, right? So actually, so here when we multiply, we want to multiply two numbers. We, you know, write it down as a, you know, you can think of it as a, you know, in that base as a polynomial, right? So you write down mm, those numbers as a vector, and we look at the uh, loosely speaking, we look at the uh, FFT, fast Fourier transform, you know, the discrete Fourier transform of those vectors, taking them as a vectors, take the convolution and come back to the, you know, uh, inverse apply the inverse Fourier transform, right, to get the uh, actual value. So maybe going into the detail, before going into the detail, let me do some examples and try to convince you what we are going to do, okay? Suppose our integers are a and b, uh, okay, a and b, and there are n digits, you know, in base, b is equal to 2 raised to the r, actually, you know. Now let, I'm, uh, I, this is a very simplified version, you know, so I think, I hope it will make sense to you. Now define capital N as 2 raised to t plus 1 and pad a and b 
with leading zeros. Okay, so that each word is now represented as n digit number. So now each is n digit number in base p. Okay, so we write it down vector a as. A n minus one, comma A n minus two. I will give you an example also, so it will be really clear to you. Base p, and similarly, b can be written as B n minus one, comma B n minus two, comma B one, comma B zero. Base p. Where each a AI or BJ is an RF R bit integer. So AI or BJ is an R bit integer. Okay. So so we have A can be written as A n minus one b raised to power n minus one plus A n minus two. B raised to power n minus two, a one b plus a naught, and b can be written as b n minus one b raised to power n minus one plus b n minus two b raised to power n minus two, and plus dot 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 b one b plus b naught. So now, because we have done the padding, uh, so we know that. Because of the padding, we have padding of zeros, right? Ai is equal to bj is equal to zero for n by two less than or equal to i comma j less than n. So we we have done the padding. Okay. Now. Okay, so now I can define cyclic convolution of two sequences. So a n minus one, a n minus two, a one comma a zero, and b n minus one. B n minus two, B one comma B zero. So cyclic convolution is the sequence C n minus one, C n minus two, C one, C zero, where C k is given as summation i n over i n j, a i b j. Such that two conditions are satisfied. Of course, zero is less than or equal to i, less than or equal to n minus one. Both cannot exceed uh, n minus one. Where we have condition that i plus j should be k, or i plus j is equal to k plus n. Okay, this condition is satisfied for all k between zero to n minus one. Now, uh, since a i is equal to b j is equal to zero for padding, you know, n by two less than equal to i comma j less than n, we have, you know, the c k can be written as. So we first evaluate this and then this, you know, so either this or this, right? So c k is something like. A k b zero plus A k minus one b one. You see the sum is k here. K plus zero is k. So i plus j is equal to k. 
i plus j is equal to k minus 1 plus 1 which is k and so on a0 k a0 b k plus a n minus 1 b k plus 1 plus a n minus 2 b k plus 2 now here you see n minus 1 uh, and k plus 1 is n plus k so this condition is satisfied right and so on a k plus 1 b n minus 1 now since these product these these coefficients are zero anything for bigger than you know n by 2 so basically all this portion is zero so ck is left here with a k b 0 plus a k minus 1 b 1 plus dot 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 a 0 b k okay so in other words i can write it down as summation a i b j 0 less than or equal to i comma j less than or equal to k with i plus j is equal to k okay so so the product uh, a of b the product of a and b can be expressed as c n minus 1 b raised to power n minus 1 plus c n minus 2 b raised to power n minus 2 plus c1 b plus c0 okay well, i think uh, this is some initial work actually so we define about the convolution of the product you know of two numbers okay any question up to this point is it okay sir uh, please explain that uh, convolution how we have calculated this uh, cyclic con convolution yeah so we are defining it like this you see the cyclic convolution of uh, two sequences a n minus one and uh, so a n minus one a n minus two a, a with zero b n n minus one b n one b n zero is this where we are writing it like this ck is you know this convolution is defined as this this product actually you know over this summation this is the definition actually you can think like this right okay now what i am saying that we have simplified it because because of the padding of the zeros you know we simplified it to this thing what is written here okay okay so i think uh, um, the time is not much so what we can do maybe you know i think uh, in the next class uh, let me show you uh, uh, you know the discrete fourier transform and some calculations uh when example you know oh, then yes, we'll, yes yeah. sir. because uh, right. sir we are not familiar with uh, this terminology so sir uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you, so you have seen by, by the way you have seen this algorithm before or this algorithm No, have you seen this algorithm before i know sir okay uh, so we know only the name of that algorithm okay so this was not taught i mean you said right in that algorithm co course uh, it was taught not much you know nothing no sir it so, was in the uh, we designer... have only the two algorithms uh, first one is a uh, kasturba algorithm and the uh, uh, fft algorithm okay but this is the fft algorithm only no uh, yes sir. okay so you know uh, anyway uh, no problem actually don't worry um i think uh, probably you know it's i think uh, you know it's uh, it will require for one full class because you know there it's quite detailed you know i i think it depends on some courses they cover in uh, a little bit of it and so in some courses they cover it go into the deep so have you done the analysis like uh, the complexity analysis of this algorithm or it was done the complexity of this algorithm the proof of it sir i i did not okay 
ओके नो प्रॉब्लम नो प्रॉब्लम डोंट वरी सो एनीवे ठीक है आई थिंक आई विल स्टॉप हियर बिकॉज यू नो इट विल वी विल कम बैक टू इट अगेन इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास बिकॉज वी नीड टू कवर फ्यू थिंग्स यू नो ओके सो नो प्रॉब्लम सो द आइडिया इज की आइडिया इन दिस एल्गोरिथम इज दैट दीज पॉइंट्स दैट वी टेक दे आर यू नो कॉम्प्लेक्स यू बूट ऑफ यूनिटी एंड दैट इज अ की आइडिया यू नो okay that is a main thing you know i think so the idea wise it should be clear we will do uh, it in more details in the next class okay okay see so next class friday 2 o'clock right is that is that correct yes sir okay thank you thank you i think we'll come back again so i think we have done one i'll got him now we'll come back to this and got him again okay thank you Thank you sir. Thank you sir.